Lord, please, what is on your heart? And he began, that all of you have come together in prayer and thanksgiving means everything to me. So few return thanks to me. I thought of the lepers. The several, the three lepers got healed, only one returned. So few return thanks to me, and that embitters my heart. If only they knew how I suffer from their ingratitude, they would change. I want you to make it known. My father sees the ingratitude and withholds precious and greatly needed graces from them because they have not given thanks for what has already been imparted to them. For instance, do you know how much grace it takes to keep you and Ezekiel alive? Every day a covenant is looking for a way to put an end to both of your lives or cause you to give up. That is why you're struggling so much. Much has been called up against you, but it is nothing I can't overcome with my grace. Oh, Lord, please tell me, how can I receive more grace to make this pain and extreme fatigue more tolerable? He replied, and you have discovered the secret thanksgiving. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. This is how you go about receiving more grace. Thank me for what you've been given, and more shall be added unto you, because you need more, because there are more and more against you every day. You are somewhat of a puzzle to your enemies, because you truly care for them, yet are able to sustain their blows and recover. I tell you the truth, they are learning much about my love and care for them. This will turn the tide because a time is coming when it will be apparent to them all that Satan does not have their best interests in mind and he is not the benevolent leader they all think he is. He's a lying scoundrel who says one thing but is really planning something very different. How can you compare a palace, beautiful wives and servants and powerful armies with a pitchfork in the stomach, hooks in your back, fire engulfing your feet, and the skin being stripped off your chest? You see, he promises one thing, but is laughing under his breath about how naive his subjects really are. Yet I stand willing to forgive those of you who have sacrificed innocent blood, and tortured, tormented, and done the most heinous personal crimes to those in your charge. And just so you understand, and it is perfectly clear to you, those who once served Satan on earth and are now in his charge in hell are not speaking to you, but actors are impersonating those who've gone on telling you how wonderful the palaces are and how wonderful the women and the food and everything is. It's all a lie. None of that's going on with them. They are immersed in torture and fire. Deceit is put on us. Deceit has been put on you. And you think you're talking to someone and they're telling you how wonderful it is and what the reward is. Guess what? They're actors. They're not who you think they are at all. Jesus continued, Beloved ones, I am acutely aware of your extreme fatigue with all that has taken place. I am familiar with how you have poured yourselves out as a libation for sinners. I am standing by and imparting graces to you all as you walk through this truly dark corridor of death and destruction. Claire, the sketch that you did of us walking through dead bodies is about to come to pass. Putin cannot be held back much longer, and what he is planning is horrific. Lucky are those who have gone home to be with me. They do not have to live through this experience, which is unparalleled in intensity and suffering, greater than the world has ever known. And today, um, we usually have our Sunday meetings a little different. 
but I felt him wanting to speak to us. So he said, thank you for breaking protocol. This truly was my will. Bear with me just a little longer, my faithful love. Please do not lay your cross down. It is needed now more than ever. Oh, thank you for not turning away, for not running away. Look at me. And I had got a very clear picture of his face. And he said, stop degrading yourself. Stop thinking I'm angry with you or that you're worthless to me. What you do, even the littlest things that you do, have a much bigger impact than what you see. You have diverted many tragedies because of your prayers. So yes, Satan will try to undermine the vessel and the words you speak from me. But I want you to know that they have been highly accurate and I am speaking through you. And you are guided by my spirit. You are not alone. Many here are also guided by my spirit so they confirm what I give you. Please, Lord, tell me the truth. Why am I so very tired? He said, assignments, 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 cloaked in worries and lies that are untrue. And yes, radiation is a force touching you, but mostly it is other covens cursing you. They fast to bring you down, beloved. I need more prayers for you because they want to take you, the leader, out. They mistakenly think that it will crumble without you, but they're wrong. Heart dwellers will increase and increase and increase to build up a formidable army of my mercy. And I might add, in my own words, Satan is obliging the Lord by giving us little tutorials and showing us what his tricks are, what his oppressions are, so we can overcome them. He's doing us quite a favor. The more he oppresses us and the more he curses us, the more we learn, the more we overcome, and the more we can teach others. So it's really quite to his disadvantage to be doing this. Heads up, we're going to get through this. You are not finished, not yet. I intend to raise you up in productivity until that very hour. So please give up those thoughts about dying. That is not my plan. In fact, quite the opposite. Lord, when will I feel this in my body, which you know is very weak? Get rid of the curses and oppressions and you will sail with the wind. Chin up, beloved. Reprieve is coming, I promise you. Not death, but resurrection power to keep you going. But these down times are also very useful and instructive, so do not disparage them. And that was about the end of his message. Well, my precious heart dwellers, let's not forget the important thing the Lord brought up in this message. And that is that he wants us to dedicate ourselves to thanksgiving so instead of complaining that you have to vacuum the floor, you give thanks to God that you have a floor and a vacuum as well. <laughs> you know, when you get lemons, you make lemonade. And the Lord is asking you to be grateful and thankful for everything that he's done for you. Take a look at where you were at 20 years ago and where you are now and thank him profusely for everything he's done for you, how he's protected you, how he's taught and carried you through so many trials. Oh, we have so much to be thankful for. And he's looking for our thanks. More graces are going to come on the heels of gratitude. But that gratitude has got to be ingrained in us, even when situations are really unpleasant. We need to be grateful, so very grateful. It could be so much worse. The Lord bless you, dear ones, and thank you for thinking of us, praying for us, and supporting our mission. God bless you for that.